Welcome to the Chiquetti International Classical Ballet's Blue Series, Topic 5, Part 2, Chiquetti, Projecting the Future. Today we have four amazing young ladies, all who performed in the various Chiquetti International Ballet competitions that have been held throughout the world. The first two dancers are Kirsten Marsh and Nicole Alice. They both performed in 2008 in Calgary in Canada, with Kirsten actually winning the major um, Maestro Enrico Cicchetti Award. We then have Samantha Batari, who performed in 2011 as a finalist in Manchester in the United Kingdom. And finally, Sade Matthews, who danced in 2014 in Richmond, Virginia in the USA. They give us a little bit about their life's journey in dance and their love of the Chiquetti method, along with some tips for those dancers who may wish to apply for our next international competition, which will be excitedly in Holland, Michigan, in the United States of America in 2024. We hope you enjoy. And good morning from Melbourne, Australia, to part two of our Blue Lecture series. And warm welcome to three amazing women on my screen at the moment. We're waiting on one lady from USA, and hopefully she will join us later. But we're coming from various parts in the world today. Um, and I've been very lucky to have these ladies here to share some of their journeys in dance with us. Uh, Kirsten Marsh, firstly, is um, currently coming from us from Prince Edward Island in Canada. And Kirsten was um, a dancer in the Chiquetti International Classical Ballet competition in Calgary in Canada, where she uh, won the Maestro Enrico Chiquetti Award. Um, Nicole Alice isn't with us at the moment, but hopefully she'll be joining us from the USA. And then we have Samantha Batari, who's um, coming to us from Madrid in Spain. And she danced in the 2011 competition in Manchester, United Kingdom, where she was um, an amazing finalist there. And then we had the beautiful Sade Matthews, who's coming from my hometown of Melbourne, Australia at the moment. So we've got one local um, here with us today. And uh, Sade danced in Richmond, Virginia in the USA in 2014. So good morning to you all, ladies. Good morning. <laughs> morning. I don't know, it's from various times that we're coming from around the world. Um, so perhaps we could um, chat to each of you just to give me a little fill in on, on, on your lives firstly, and then we'll come, come together more for a group discussion. Um, Kirsten, You've had uh, an amazing journey since um, your first experience from going overseas. How old were you when you actually entered the competition in Calgary? I know I'm going back quite a bit. Yes, I'm going to have to. Uh, I believe I was 16. Mm -hmm. almost, almost 17. Yeah, no. Mm. Yeah, 2008. I think I was 16. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a fairly young age and it was kind of a big journey. Kirsten was, um, well, she's been a Chiquetti lady when she started at a young age. Am I right, Kirsten, in your ballet training? What age did you start? Uh, ballet or Chiquetti? Uh, oh, well, ballet just generally. Uh, that was at three. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I did my first exam as young as they let you, I guess. Yeah. It was Shaketi from the get-go. Yeah, so which is which is interesting because I, I, I know a few of you started um, right from a young age and then some joined a little bit later, which we'll hear. Um, so Kirsten starts from right through from the graded system of ballet. Then she gets an amazing scholarship to the Victorian College of the Arts Secondary School in Melbourne, where um, fortunately she was like all the ladies here today was able to continue or commence Chiquetti studies um, at the school in their after hours program. And then she went on the amazing journey of um, deciding to uh, enter the, which was the second Chiquetti International Classical Ballet in Canada. 
I know, again, I'm going back a long way. Perhaps you can give us some insights into a little bit what it was like for you then. Yeah, that was mind-blowing. I didn't realise at the time like how scary it was. But it, uh, it, yeah, I don't think I comprehended at the time how amazing it was. It's only in hindsight that I was so amazed by it and kind of amazed that it hadn't happened more often, that it was only the second one and that it, it hadn't continued more frequently since the first. So I was really privileged to be a part of it and I, I kind of realised how far away Australia was from anything else but the okay. men, all these other people all around the world also do shiketi and we're actually all so much closer than we realized so it was a great little networking um uh I'll say like conference almost but it was you know a co competition as well so yeah that's what I remember <laughs> from 2008 <laughs> yeah and I'm, I might just quite quite like jump into everyone firstly just to sort of see where their, their, their journey started and then we'll talk about our lives a bit in the future. So Pat Samantha, who's now in um, Spain, you, you came from uh, a Chiquetti background also from a young age? Yeah, so um, I started ballet at six. And I'm from Adelaide and... Um, I started Shiketi as soon as I could. So I got into the ex exams as soon as I could. And um, and then, yeah, went to VCAS after that and continued with you. Yeah. <laughs> and then nice. Samantha, Samantha actually um, from, well, from being an interstate girl, which was um, a, a new journey in its own right, coming over to, to the full-time studies at the Victorian College of the Arts Secondary School. Um, then she makes her journey over to Manchester, United Kingdom. How old were you when you went to Manchester? I was uh, 17, nearly 18. Mm -hmm. It was in my final year at VCAS. Um, yeah. And so, was that the first time you had actually gone overseas too, if I'm right? It was the first time I ever <laughs> stepped out of Australia. It was... Um, like Kirsten said, it's one of those things that you, you don't really realise at the time until you look back on it. Um, but it was a very incredible experience. And I went over um, with one of the mothers and one of the girls, um, Ashley, who went over there as well. We both represented um, Australia as well. And uh, it was so interesting to see, like, even though um, England is the same you know, it's the Commonwealth that we all speak English. Um, as, as Australia, it's still a, a different world over when you get over, over there to Europe, you know, it's, it, it's, it's completely much bigger. Or well, at the time it was much bigger and greater. Now I come back to Australia and I see it as the same. So um, at the time, yeah, it was quite an incredible experience. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Shade, um, your journey started in Jaketi a little bit later, although you started classical ballet early and then, of course, again, get a, a full-time scholarship to the Victoria College of the Arts Secondary School where you commence the Jaketi program. And then you go off to Richmond, Virginia. How yes. old were you when you went there, Shade? Um, I think 16, 16, 17, it was in my year 11, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I started ballet when I was four, but I got to VCAT, so I started at intermediate. Um, and I think the opportunity to go over to America, um, national was huge and I actually still <laughs> I still own a jacket for Kinshiketi um students. Um it was to me having not been a part of the shiketi to that um to then realise that this was a like global um there were people doing exactly the same things as I was all the way world 
um and like I a, as a kid anyway and I think one of the reasons that so badly wanted to do ballet was that, that I knew that I could travel with it and so to have it introduced so early on that you can get on a plane and go and do ballet in some other part so it was yeah it was such a great experience for me fantastic and now Kirsten when you go over to um Calgary Canada some exciting things happen to you over there um of course being awarded the um um, Maestro Enrico Cicchetti Award, it actually leads you to study in Canada. Would you like to touch on that for us? Sure, yeah. Um, I didn't even realise that was an option doing the competition. I thought it was just a simple prizes and there you go. But it was uh, an opportunity to actually be offered um, scholarships and summer, inten summer intensives and even some of them, so some other uh, competitors got year uh, scholarships to school. So yeah, I was offered um, summer intensive at the National Ballet School in Canada, in Toronto. And so that was for the following summer. So came home and had that fun discussion with the parents and decided it's just one of those things you have to do. You can't, you can't say no. And I mean, there's nothing bad about doing it. So I went off and did that the next year and their summer intensive is also their audition period for all of their grades for their entire high school. And uh, I had left VCAS at that point. I decided to go do um, full-time dance in order to sort of prepare for, for the summer intensive. And then when I was there, I was part of their audition process and they ended up accepting me into the school for their final year. So for their year 12, grade 12 yeah so actually I know uh, they were very generous at the time too didn't they in their care and looking after you they even um helped you go back to Australia to to keep in contact with your parents which I thought was incredibly generous so Mavis Staines the director there she's very conscious of all the students health and mental well-being and completely understands homesickness and that it you know it's a huge thing, especially being from Australia. It's the other side of the world. It's not an easy flight. It's not an easy transition, especially if this is your first time away. Um, so she reached out to one of her many, many donors that, you know, uh, helped the school run. And, you know, they were, they offered to send me home for Christmas to make sure I was, I was with family for Christmas. So I can't thank Mr. and Mrs. McCain. <laughs> enough for that Christmas I really made sure that I was I stayed up I stayed on track I came back I was able to you know finish the year and focus so yeah, that's I mean I thought that was fantastic actually well while I'm here I'm, I might just um propose this question to all of you there's been a lot of discussion um, in recent times. Um, of course, wellness is one very, very important factor. And I, um, I think it's a huge issue at the moment, but also that um, for people from Australia to travel overseas, uh, is it a good thing? Is it a good thing for their mental health? Shouldn't they be staying with their families and so forth? Yet I notice in the, well, in the, the people I've selected to speak to today, that all of you had some other, I don't know whether it was a, a, a burning sensation or, or what it was, but you all seem to have a great passion for travel. And in your lives, you seem to have been able to successfully use that. Was it a point at, in the competition that gave you a, a bit of a flair for travel or what took you to that journey and give it, gave you the strength to actually um, take on your careers there? Perhaps I'll go to Samantha firstly on this one. Well, um, from that competition, um, it opened my eyes to see that, like my other ladies have said here, um, ballet is also everywhere else and everywhere everywhere else is doing the same as what we're doing but it has more history behind it um Australia is such a young country so going over to other countries that have had done 
you know, ballet and art and opera and everything else for such a long time and have so much um, abundance of um, um, opportunities, but also um, people that support the art. Um, it opened my eyes to say, like, I really want to be in a place like this. And of course, I have homesickness all the time. COVID for me was the big thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to see my family for three years. And that was a very tough situation. But luckily, we do have things like Zoom, we have FaceTime, that gave me the courage to say, it's okay, I'm doing what I love to do. And that's a, it's a passion that I've always had since I was six years old, the first day I did ballet. So definitely um I knew from a young age that this is what I do and what I want to do in life and I think that also gives you the courage to say okay I'm gonna leave my family and do what I need to do in life and when you have family that support you in that too that is also such a big thing um to have always had my father be so supportive of me and saying do what you need to do go where you need to go and I've got your back that's something incredible to have yeah and yeah oh, great Sade what do you feeling about leaving Australia at an early age um yeah so I left I left VCAS to go to I was 17 so I went to do my year 12 just like Kirsten went to do her years. um so you did year 12 in New I Zealand think, in New Zealand yeah, so I did it in New Zealand. Um, however, I only spent five months there because I got a misdiagnosis of an injury. Um, and I think for me, traveling was never a scary thing. It was always exciting. Who wants to go overseas, then I think that's enough to be okay. Um, if you don't want to do it then it's not for you you have that urge to do it and you have dance supporting you for me it was like oh, as long as i had a studio to walk into and a bar to hold on to at home um i was like the studio and the people there that home for me and like samantha said like there's always homesickness but you learn and also for me, COVID, I couldn't see my family for three years and and home gets taken away from you. So there was always, you know, there was always a plane and go home whenever you need to, if you need to. Your family is always going to be there. But this amazing experience overseas is fleeting and isn't always going to when I can. Um, so yeah i think honestly i think traveling helped my mental health <laughs> yeah yeah no um, but... from family during covid when i wasn't able to do what i was detrimental to my mental health but i think covid was detrimental to everyone's health <laughs> i think being able to travel is such an incredible experience so so much out there especially regarding the arts and dance that um Europe compared to australia um it Can just I... opens your eyes to so many different cultures and languages and i know such a nice speak a different language now as well that i never would have had the opportunity to do if i had to stay um you know as much as you learn a language at school it's hi how are you one two three yeah mm -hmm. i think i got a lot more bang for my buck was going to being able to go overseas so yeah, yeah i i encourage i to get on a plane, go and see the world. If it means various stages and studios, um, do it. That's, that's in, in what I've done at all. Yeah, yeah th thanks, Sade. And I, I think I should say, just so that our audience don't think that, that <coughs> things are, uh, are wrong in Australia either, Australia has the most amazingly... Um, no. Uh, 
institution and training, it, it's totally world-class. We've got world-class ballet companies and world-class state companies and an incredible choreography. I think it's just the interest of the culture and, and what it brings in those layers that it possibly brings to your lives. Um, and I wonder whether it actually um, develops you as, well, I'll put it must, as a person, um, but as an artist. And perhaps I should go through to each person and, and ask them what, what, which companies they've been involved with and where they've performed so that our audience today know um, a little bit about your backgrounds. Although I'm going to put the biographies at the end of this lecture series and some photos so people can um, read more in depth about your lives. Kirsten, where did you end up after training? Uh, so my last uh, training was actually in Mannheim in Germany. I did my Bachelor of Arts uh, there and that was a full time um, that was just one year. So, so I went from Canada to, to Germany. So I finished National Ballet Canada. Yep. Went and did one year of full-time training in Germany. And that actually gave me the chance to have my year of training. But every weekend during audition season, you go off and you do your auditions. So that was kind of the point of that. That's why NBS, you know, push you over to Europe and that they help with that. So I ended up getting into Mein Franken Theater. Würzburg um, and I was there for five years so I I didn't even know about the company being in Australia being in Canada I had no idea it existed it's not until you're there and you're looking at every city on the map and looking up and seeing if it has a, if it has a theater if it has a program if it has anything that you're like oh okay I'll go there oh look there's a train every hour cool I'll go so and you just start sending emails everywhere. So it was, I, I was there and I was there for five years and uh, I take a bit of time to get familiar and to feel comfortable. So it was about one year and I, I didn't like it, but after that I was, I was happy. I was happy with the, with the small company. I, I, I was fine um, staying put for a while and actually growing in that um, scenario. Um, we toured to different cities and we worked with the opera. So we had to perform with them as well, which was also um, a bit refreshing sometimes changing over. Uh, yeah. And then I left Germany and came back to Canada for other reasons. Um, but I ended up guesting with Le Grand Ballet um, in Montreal for about two and a half years. So mm -hmm. I did, I actually was more, um, modern classical in Würzburg in, in Germany. And then I came back to Canada and it ended up being a transition back to pretty classical. So that was the yeah. way around, the harder oh. way around. That's so. not nice that you can just yeah change the genres. And I think that's that, that strong training that you have to be able to do that. And you did some really some leading roles in, in Mannheim. Uh, not in Mannheim, that was the school, but in Würzburg, yes. I, Würzburg, sorry, yes. Can you tell us a little one about a couple of the roles there? Um, so a lot of the pieces we did were actually choreographed by our director and we had a few um, guest choreographers. So nothing of, uh, I'll say like we did a Snow White and I was Snow White, but we worked with break dancers as well. So we got to work with local dancers and put together a show with them. So that was okay. I got the jazz runners out. That was I never, <laughs> but also point shoes and flats and every every who <laughs> was in that. Show. It was interesting, um, but I think that's what I liked about the smaller company was that I was able to do those leading roles. And my last performance was actually Requiem, and it was with the opera singers as well. It was all live, and it was just it made you goosebump for the entire time. And um, what I loved about that role was it was 45 minutes and I never left the stage. Mm -hmm. And that, that was incredible. And I loved that feeling. And so I was, it was a bittersweet. I left on my favorite piece, my favorite role. And it was like the hardest I'd, I'd done. So that one was, a, that one sticks in my, yeah. in my. Fantastic. And, and Samantha, um, after your training, I know you were similar to Shade that you go from 
finish at, at the VCAS and then you go over to New Zealand to complete your training over there for further training after year 12. And then you might like to tell us a bit about your journey. Yeah, so after VCAS, I did three years um, at the New Zealand School of Dance um, as a classical major. And while being there, I got to do a secondment. So I got to join the Royal New Zealand Ballet for three months on their Swan Lake uh, program. So that was the three months, I think. But I was there basically for six months on and off, obviously learning the choreography, being with the company, still doing full-time training. And then I went on tour them, with them for three months. And I think we did maybe 35 shows or something crazy. It was um, it was an eye opener <laughs> for, for Act of Swan Lake. I was like, okay, this is the real deal. This is what I'm getting myself into. Um, and that was amazing. And then uh, after that, I um, actually went over to Europe to do some auditions because at the time there, I, I didn't have a job. I, after the uh, three years, um, at um, New Zealand School of Dance. So then I um, ended up in Victor Yate Ballet in Madrid, in Spain, and I was there for three years. Uh, and they uh, were a modern uh, classical company. We did a lot of just his work, Victor Yate. I unfortunately never got a chance to do anything with other choreographers. It was just when I was leaving that they introduced new choreographers. Um, but after that, I uh, went over to offer Leipzig, uh, Leipzig Ballet in Germany. And I was there for four years. And um, I then went back to doing semi very classical pieces, which was Uber Schultz, and then going into very modern pieces um, by the director and other choreographers um, that we had um, come as guests. And um, then after my four years there, I end up back in Madrid and now I'm at the uh, Compañía Nacional de Danza in Spain um, under the director of Hockey in the Louvre. Fantastic. Wow. Can't yeah. wait to get to visit all, all of you in all these amazing countries. And Shate, would you like to fill us in a little bit about um, your training after you left the Victorian College of the Arts Secondary School? Yeah. Um, so I attended New Zealand School of Dance for about um, five months because I actually got a misdiagnosis of an injury and that had to go back to Australia. Um, but then after I recovered from that, I went over to Europe to attend some ballet summer schools. So I went to Princess Grace Summer School in Monte Carlo and then um, international masterclasses in Prague where I met the director of Scottish Ballet and was fortunate enough to go and do some classes with Scottish Ballet. Uh, and then from there, I went to do a summer school in Sevilla in Spain, um, run by principal, ex-principal dancer of English National Ballet. And she um, offered me a scholarship to a school in Italy, um, which was amazing. So then I moved to Siena in, in Italy um, and I was there for, for about for eight years, for eight years, eight months um, for the year. Um, learned Italian there as well, which was awesome. <laughs> Took a while, but we got there. It's always good um, to have a language skills. Oh, it's fabulous. It's, I didn't think that that was going to come from dance, but it did, which is an extra bonus. And then from Italy, I moved to Stockholm in Sweden to attend the Royal Swedish Ballet School. Um, I was then unfortunately kicked out of Sweden for a month due to my visa um, oh, and had to go a back to... That's problem with Australians, isn't it? I'm sorry to interrupt those visas. It's right. been a, one of the biggest things, I think, um, for those of us who, who travel all those uh, in their careers, having to constantly get those visas updated yeah so many so many visas I had a student visa for Italy and then student visa for Sweden and then I moved to the UK um, for Northern Ballet in their pre-professional program so then I had a ancestry visa because my grandfather was born in Scotland um, for there so lots of paperwork lots of jumping through hoops um, but it's worth it if it means that you can dance in another country you do it 
Um, and then spent the year in Leeds. And whilst I was there, I performed with Northern Ballet with their for their children's ballet of The Ugly Duckling. And then represented Northern Ballet's pre-professional program down in Barletta in Italy, performing part of the. Um, and then I was offered my first contract um, dancing with a company in Bulgaria, the State Opera Russe Ballet, um, and was there for about two years and was able to perform alongside the opera as well as with the ballet and performed pieces like Sleeping Beauty and did The White Cat and Nutcracker and did Arabian and uh, Arabian Coffee. Um, and then with the opera, traveled actually throughout the country and a little bit of Romania with Cabaret um, and did the lead dance role um, of Violetta in the opera's performance of La Traviata. Um, which was awesome because the director actually allowed me creative freedom for um, the opening scene, um, allowed me to improvise for, for that each night, which was exciting but scary because you don't want to <laughs> mess anything up. Um, but yeah, with a live orchestra, that was awesome. Um, and then... After some time in Bulgaria, I auditioned for English National Ballet mm -hmm. um, and for their performance of Swan Lake um, at Royal Albert Hall and was given the contract, signed the contract, but then that was 2020. So that meant that my contract was cancelled. Um, and then after a lot of thought of what I was going to do. I was going to say that was the COVID period, of course. Um, and 2020 wasn't good even in Australia. We had to cancel the Chiquetti International yeah. Ballet competition that year in Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. So that um, that was really unfortunate. But life goes on. So I went to do some summer courses then in Croatia and Hungary, um, and then decided to go back and pack up my things in Bulgaria. I moved everything to England as just a safety option um, and then moved to Barcelona in Spain and stayed there for six months and started to dive into the contemporary realms and did a contemporary investigation and improvisation course. Um, but again, restrictions were still coming in and out. So it was really difficult. And then my foot started, um, becoming really painful mm -hmm. um, and made the tough decision to go home. So I actually went to New Zealand because I'm um, half Kiwi um, and found out later that in 2021 that I have degenerative arthritis, mm -hmm. um, which meant that I needed to get surgery. I had an arthroscopic debridement to remove a lot of the damaged tissue and bone. Um, and now after months of rehab, I'm starting to dance again. And Well, that we're very, very excited for. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're on the recovery. Thank yeah, you, it's all been there. Thank you. I think I'll ask a couple of questions now. Uh, two things. I'm going to go back and, and then we can perhaps have a look, look at things. I'm going to ask, and, and I don't mind who'd like to go first, but what does Chiquetti mean to you? Samantha, you look like you're really thinking there. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Shikeri to me is everything. <laughs> I know it sounds strange to say, but I never had um, other types of programs offered to me at the time when I was so young. I, I was only offered Shikeri and it, it was my world. It, for me, Shikeri was what I thought was ballet and it and it is you know um it gives you such a clear sight of how to do your port de bras the way you jump the way you do adage it's helped me throughout my career I've learned so many different styles since that moment and 
to me, they still bring back, you know, oh, this is the Shiketi way of moving. Oh, this is how the, they, they do the adage. This is how they do the porta bras. And, um, you know, it, um, throughout the syllabuses that they have as well, they challenge you from such a young age. And this actually helps you in your career once you get to the, the big leads, you know, um, to be able to do point in the center. The, you don't start doing that until you get into your, you know, full-time training. And Shiketi kind of makes you do that from a, a younger age, from a younger point of view. And, um, and I also feel that it brought me to Europe too, because Shiketi is Italian and, you know, you want to go over to see where it all was, was created. Um, so that is, yeah, Shiketi is my everything. <laughs> well, that's lovely. That And, and Kirsten, what uh, did your Shiketi training or what does Chiketi mean to you? Yeah, and another word for everything would be home. It was always home. I guess, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> because it was, again, everything I did as well, you know, um, scholars and, and um, down at Albert Park every Sunday or I can't, like it's vaguing, but Chiketi yeah, was always something I could rely on. It was always something I could go to and feel like I knew what was going on. I knew what was expected of me. I knew, I just, I just knew, and I liked that, that safety of it. And, and like Samantha was saying as well, it, it, it challenged you. And there's this one specific exercise from, I think it's advanced too, although I could be wrong. There's one adage in the center that's just on one leg the whole time. Mm. And uh, I couldn't help be reminded during piece that I did in Würzburg that was just it was so hard I, I, I remember that adage being so hard like that killer feeling in the in the thigh like you know that's that's where I was reminded again of Shiketi I wasn't doing Shiketi at the time but I was thinking back to that like oh I'm having that feeling again and yeah <laughs> I think it might have been premier a second arabesque if I'm correct <laughs> with the lot of the ponches oh, and the grand fuertes yeah yeah <laughs> very very good training exercise fabulous for sleeping beauty <laughs> uh, Shade, I don't know whether I've got the sound a little bit better but what does Chiquetti mean to you yeah is I think I is my sound better yeah, now fantastic amazing yeah. cool yeah. I just closed my tab and reopened it um thank you um Chiquetti means to me um it was an eye opener. I'd done so many different variations of syllabuses. I'd done like I didn't. I'd done RAD and Veganova, and when I was in um, Leeds, I also did um, a technique by one of the women that works for the company up there. Um, and for me, Shiketi was the one that kind of I think stuck. Um, I think in the sense that initially when you're learning all the work, it looks like this big mountain <laughs> and you can't do it. <laughs> and then by the end, by the exam, you can do it. And I, I remember, I think it was you that said, you'll, you'll be able to do it. Like, just wait, it's just the beginning. And I was like, nah, I couldn't, I didn't, I did not believe you. Like the work just seems insane at points. And then, and then it's right. You're right. By the end of it, you're doing the stuff that you couldn't do before. Um, in fact, some of the work that I think that I did for advanced two is still some of the most technically challenging work I did in my whole career. Mm -hmm. um, so it does prepare you for those moments where you need to be on stage or um, or you're just in a really hard like company class one day. <laughs> and you remember, okay, I've done this before, I can do it again. Um, yeah, yeah okay. I think also in the sense of artistry, Shiketi was really um, integral to my um, like dance performance quality um, with all of the different heads and arms and porta bras. Um, for me, the porta bras and Shiketi are just, they're so lush. <laughs> they, they hold a nice little place in my heart. Um, 
and I think they're ingrained in your body. I recently went back to um to niche and um, did class with Nicole and she was doing some advanced two exercises she did a pot pro de bra and she put the music on and it was straight back in there I haven't done that work for years and I put the music on and it's just like it's in your body <laughs> so yeah so you, you came back to do a class that we were doing with the teachers the diploma work yeah yeah, yeah I was thinking about doing my diploma and yeah. um but my foot just uh, yeah, no, just, didn't yeah. want to be in shoes. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was in incredible. Also seeing the diploma work in, in books, like there's pages and pages of work and you're just like, oh my gosh, it's like doing a whole um, like master's degree in ballet. And I think that's something that's incredible is how it extensive Shaketi's work was and is um, the fact that you know you've got so many exercises per level but then put them all together and then for diploma having to be able to pull out anyone from any level is just yeah it's incredible so and and from the um thanks Sade and I love that word lush that's that really is a it really is lush, yeah. word to it I like that lush uh from the experience of, of you going overseas I know I'm going back to the Chiquetti International thing but we've got the 2024 coming up and I think we'd, it would be really nice or valuable for students who are thinking about entering that in 2024 in Holland Michigan that perhaps each of you ladies could give, a, give um, some advice on how to approach it and also um, perhaps some funny moments of your times or some of your own experiences and do you ladies ever or have you ever been in contact with anyone else that was in that competition or have you ever met up on your journeys yet? Kirsten would you like to go first for this? Sure. Um, well I think going into it now you've got um, previous ones to look back on. When I did mine, the first so long ago that no one really knew what to expect. So, um, I mean, I, I kind of went into it excited, not knowing what was going to happen, but, but okay, kind of just sort of oblivious, <laughs> I guess. But I was so happy I did it because in hindsight, it's, you know, you, it, it isn't, a concrete thing it's, it doesn't you know force you to move overseas like if you, if you don't want to you don't have to you don't you don't have to do anything but how will you know unless you try so it's very much a see where your limits are see where you can push yourself and just like the shaketi exercises you you will get there you will do it you you will do more than you think you can so it's so eye-opening and from that competition I have still so many, like, you know, the Facebook friends and Instagram friends, but I'm still following these people. Oh, great. I'm still quite a few. And I met some, I, you, you suddenly discover the teeny tiny circles that are in dance because then when I went to the school in Toronto, I met a sibling who was there of two of the girls that performed in the competition. It was like a dancing family, so they were dotted everywhere. So you end up meeting people who know those people so the the connections just instantly just start spider webbing and yeah it's in, it's incredible what you can learn from the people you meet even if you don't talk to them but if you just follow their career and follow where they've been and suddenly you're all in the same theater again at a gala in Leipzig or wherever and you're like oh my god and it, yeah it's the networking possibilities are incredible and sometimes that is how you will get your job is by who you know what they know when they know it yeah so it it will bring you more than you realize but you have to do it to to even have a chance yeah i like that word connections and family too very 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 good it actually came up in josh hunt's interview who's talking about the connections too samantha 
Well, funnily enough, I'm now working with one girl from the competition. Oh, so, um, yeah. Um, and uh, going to the competition itself, um, I had so many amazing memories of performing on a huge stage. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I wasn't really afraid to be there. You know, you might get competition nerves or anything, but in the end, I, I went there not thinking of it as a competition. I went there as, you know, going overseas, dancing on a beautiful stage, you know, doing the variations, having fun. And in the end, you make the connections, you do the networking, you discover new things. Um, and actually meeting all these people and, you know, you are following their lives and everything. As I went overseas again to audition, I stayed with many of them that had homes in Europe and they helped me yeah. out, um, especially the, fin- you know, finding hotels and all these things overseas. And I was in a very unstable financial situation when I was much younger. Um, this really helped, um, you know, having friends and you meet people and everyone is willing to help you. And I think sometimes you have to allow people to help you to therefore, um, you know, go forward and, and enjoy life. And yeah. And yeah, now I'm working with, with a girl from the competition. So it's it's just crazy. What country did she come from? Uh, She's Spanish. Spanish. Ah, fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, very interesting. (laughs) Fabulous. And Sade? Um, yeah, I still, um, I also like have followed a lot of people's journeys and lives and, um, yeah, the girl that I swapped my jacket with when I was there, I noticed that she's now married and it's just beautiful to like feel, know what they're doing outside of the ballet world as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think like maybe the Shaketi International Competition is a great example of how small the ballet world is as well. So like with Sam now dancing with someone that she competed with in, a, in um, the competition, um, with all the different places that I had been to for different studies as well, you rock up to an audition somewhere and there's two people that you knew from where you were there and then you arrive at a school there and this person knows that person and this person knows that person and it's a very small very small world so you don't you want to keep in sweet with everyone because yeah again at times um you know there's a couch or a bed that you might need somewhere (laughs) like Sam was saying also. Um, Yeah, I have messaged some people like from the competition, I think years ago when I was looking at going somewhere that I knew they were um, and we would had hoped to catch up but didn't manage to. Um, But there's definitely people from that competition that I know even now years after the competition, um, I would happily like host them if I could and I, or vice versa. Um, I think the connections that you build with people when you're quite young and it's your first international experience of dance. And for a lot of the others, it's their first international experience of dance. Um, you hold those people quite close to your heart at least I did anyway Um, because it was the first time I've gone oh I know these people in xyz country that also do ballet Um, yeah it's it's a crazy idea that was the first time that it had happened for me Um, and now it's just a regular thing like my best friend is from the company that I worked in Bulgaria but she's now living in England and another best friend of mine is still in New Zealand or um, now in Germany. So, you know, I now have friends spread throughout Europe and the world because of dance, um, which is crazy to think. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, and so, we've just, we've just yeah. got Nicole. 
good I don't know whether it's good morning or good evening but good morning from Melbourne Australia Nicole <laughs> hi it's, it's I it's early evening here good morning everyone it's very early in Australia good morning I, don't, I think I don't know whether you've got the times times a little bit um, um, am I at the very end uh, you're at the very end of this but that's okay we love to have <sighs> you here it's all good Nicole and I'll just Sorry introduce again. no that's okay I'll just introduce Nicole to our our um our audience um Nicole danced if I'm correct in Calgary Canada in 2000 and eight with Kirsten so yeah and you are now in uh the USA you'll have to just tell me which which area you, you are in America at the moment and yeah, in Georgia in Georgia and, mm -hmm. and um sorry Nicole we're sort of going one step back a little bit but perhaps um I, I'm sort of should warm you into this I suppose but um you you were training the Chiquetti method from a young young age too, like um, a lot of our ladies here, um, and then also went uh, to the Victorian College of the Arts Secondary School, where you could continue your Chiquetti training there. And of course, then you had the wonderful experience of going into the international competition. We've asked all the others what they actually gained from it. We also asked them what Chiquetti meant to them. And we'll also find out what your career is um, at the present time or, or what, what happened to your life. So very briefly, would you like to answer one of those questions? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, can you pick one for me? <laughs> well, 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 can I, is it all right to ask you straight away, what does Chiquetti mean to you? Oh, absolutely. And apologies in advance, this half of my face is numb. I just got back from the dentist. So this is going to oh. be great. <laughs> um, Shiketi for me is my whole entire life. It put me on a trajectory to where I am now. I would not be who I am now. I would not have met my husband. I wouldn't have the beautiful baby boy that I gave birth to four months ago. Like literally the friends that are on this screen, like it made my entire life. I, I wouldn't have a job. I, I don't know where I'd be without it. It's everything. Well, oh, that, that was a real great introduction there, Nicole. <laughs> And we, I'm glad it means everything we were saying, you know, about the strength that it, it, it had given the dancers and they even remember, you know, certain adages and so forth. And when they were at a hard moment in their life, they're like, well, if I can do a Chiquetti adage, I can probably do this ballet as well. All those little moments in life. Um, Nicole, what you, you've had a really, really interesting career. It's taken you um, into a lot of... Um, commercial areas as well can you just give us a little background oh goodness yeah there, there's a lot I've done a lot of things which has been really really fun I've been very lucky but Shiketi after that international competition what happened there that was at the end of high school for me so then no yes yeah so then at uni I went into a career that um, was centered around feet I chose podiatry and ballet had a very big impact on that for me um and got that degree then put it on hold to pursue dance went and did full-time at the Australian Conservatory of Ballet uh burnt out I guess is what you would say I was just it was too much and not for me it took a break then I got into the cheerleading side of things at university and loved it and pursued that ended up long story short I cheered for Melbourne Storm rugby team and our local basketball team as well then I went over to America did a bunch of contracts did some cruise ships uh, ended up cheering for the NFL as an NFL cheerleader for the Las Vegas Raiders which was super fun and danced as a showgirl in Las Vegas for ages but would not have been able to do any of those awesome international contracts without Shiketi. Oh, and um, Japan. I danced as a Disney princess in Tokyo Disneyland. That's where I met my husband. So again, wouldn't have met my husband without dance. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks, Nicole. And and look, um, I'm sorry we're sort of at the end end of this. Nicole. No, I'm sorry. so glad. No, no, no. We're so glad that you to join us because I think you're all such amazing women and got such diverse lives but to finish off with perhaps we could um I could ask you what your future is and what you're doing perhaps today um Kirsten I know you've you've um in in a new part of your life now would you like to let us know what's happening there yeah so I um I when I moved back to Montreal I am moved back to Canada it was to be with my partner who I would not also have met if I had not done Shiketi. We met back at um, NBS. He was the year above me. So uh, we've been together ever since. 
So I came back to Canada to be with him and I kept the dancing going for a bit as much as I could. But I also knew that I, I wanted to do other things. I, I had other interests. I wanted to kind of puddle my way out of dance into something else. So I was uh, simultaneously dancing with Le Grand Ballet in Montreal and uh, working at a bakery in Ottawa, which is a city two hours away. So every month just <laughs> back and forth, <laughs> which was uh, which was fun for a bit. But then uh, about two and a half years later, we got over that. So we decided to move to where we are now. And from what um, Raf's done, my partner, he was also a dancer. He retired. Um, from what he's done over the last decade and from what I've learned in baking, we decided that we wanted to open up our own business. And so that's why we moved to the island. We moved March of 2020, totally unrelated to COVID. We just happened to want to move. And then we got on the island, which is where his parents live and COVID exploded. And so the process has been a bit slower since then. As I'm sure everyone's has. Um, but yeah, we're in the process of trying to open up our own our own business. So this is actually the space I'm in, which is our house back there. And it's here, but it's um it's a bakery and a bike shop. Um, the bike shop part also uh, has a training part uh, to it. So Raf Ayel, he's been dealing with a bunch of the students on the islands that are into cycling and some of them have never left the island. They've never gone to other parts of Canada. So we've been really trying to like push the kids to like leave the island, try new things. And they went to another province to compete in Canada games and trying to open their eyes to the rest of the world. The cycling community is not so different from the dancing community. Yeah, it's sure. There's networks, there's people, they want to help. And so I, every time we talk to a kid about, you know, well, what can we do? I think back to Shaketi and think this is, this is exactly what it did. It ingrained that push, go, find someone that, yeah, I don't know what the words are, but oh. <laughs> it's just this. So I'm sort of just translating it into something else. No, 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 it, it's fantastic. And, and that creativity and that energy too. And I, I actually like the idea of um, uh, being able to bake and then get, get have the exercise to get rid of the, what, what you've just eaten. <laughs> Burn the calories. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Samantha, what direction are you, are you taking and what's your future? Um, well, I just moved to uh, Madrid again um, at a Compañía Nacional de Danza, um, and they're a much more classical company, and I'm very um, happy and privileged. I also did move back here for my partner too. We've been together ever since I moved to Spain, so um, we've been together for nearly seven years. And um, during the pandemic, when I was in Leipzig and there was, you know, nothing going on, I did um, online degrees in yoga. So I've done my Hatha Jinyasa meditation and yin via online. And I have done my Bikram and another Vinyasa course in person. So at the moment, as I'm still uh, dancing, at the company um, after work, um, I teach yoga mm -hmm. at uh, Bikram Yoga Spain. So I'm I'm very happy at the current moment, um, and I see myself in the near future after dance. Um, and I hope I still have many more years to dance, but you never know. Um, so my future in my brain is to open up a yoga studio. Oh wow! Okay, great. Yeah. And I had the privilege of meeting your lovely partner too. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and on your visit to, to Melbourne. And Sade, yeah. where are you heading? Um, it's actually very similar to Sam. So I finished my yoga teacher training. I did mine in India um, and also in Hatha Vinyasa based works. Um, I'm currently studying um, Ayurvedic medicine as well for yoga teaching. So it's like yogic um, food, herbs for bodily and mental health. Um, I finished my certificate three in fitness and group fitness um, and starting my um, personal training certificate, so 
beautiful. Um, I have started dancing again, have moved into the contemporary realms, um, which I had always wanted to do, but had hoped to do through a ballet company. So like kind of morph into that, but um, point shoes are no longer a thing in my life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, don't mind kissing those goodbye. That's okay. Actually, it's um, fun. I always I always laugh because um, that's one of the things I always wanted to do: throw the point juice away. But <laughs> it's really interesting with adult ballet now. When you teach adult ballet, the first thing that all I want to do is put a pair of point juice on. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Which is wonderful. We've, we've all experienced yeah. it. That we've got to. Really yeah. Do. Sorry to interrupt. Um, that. That's okay. So yeah. Um, I would yeah so at the moment I'm not I'm not sure what's happening with my future which is exciting and scary um I think having had dance since forever um having COVID and injury change mm. my direction a lot um it's the first time in my life that I haven't had a like tunnel vision focus of what I wanted to do um and it's opened my eyes up to just so many things that uh the, the world's so big and there's so many things outside of the dance world and I never knew how many of those things I actually wanted to do until all of this um but yeah I feel very lucky and fortunate that um that the dance world has opened up again for me right um but yeah, I would also love to open a yoga studio further down in my life or teach at international yoga retreats. Um, but I'd love to have a studio or yoga space that incorporates holistic medicine, massage, physiotherapy, psychology and yoga all in one space to have a um, holistic it. health um, clinic. Um, so, you know, that one stop shop for everything that you need. Um, I look forward. I look forward to going there. Yeah, <laughs> in Melbourne, and, and Nicole I probably what? will be. I'll probably oh, good. come back here eventually. Um, <laughs> but my um, feet are definitely definitely itchy. I want to go back overseas desperately. I'm actually heading over to the UK to pick up all my life that I left there during COVID. So I left in a rush to get back home. So I have three boxes and a suitcase in in Wales at the moment. So going to go through stuff that I haven't seen for like three years <laughs> I wish, see you what luck happens. Of, wish you luck with that and Nicole Thank you. what's your new direction oh man very different to what it used to be the cheerleader dancer side I am currently lucky enough to be a stay-at-home mom raising up a baby boy uh I live on a farm got a thank you very much I live on a farm I've got a bunch of animals that I take care of every day which is really really fun I get good and dirty every single day this is probably the first time I've worn makeup in I don't even know but in the future I do hope to uh, dip my toes back into the dance side of things I am a qualified uh, Pilates instructor as well as uh, uh, what's it called personal trainer I basically just got a bunch of degrees during COVID just because I could. <laughs> so I'd love to put those into use now that I'm back at it kind of thing. I would love to go back and teach some dance just to kind of get to know the community where I'm at in Georgia and just to find that friendship because the friendships you make in dance are unlike anything else. We're just a different beat of human and, and I miss those people. So I'd love to dive back into that, but very happy with where I'm at right now, even though it looks very different. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, look, it, it's been a delight to have this connection again with you all um and I think that sense of family and the connections is important um I'm going to say Viva Chiquetti because I think um Chiquetti has a wonderful spot and I hope that the that you can also share that love and joy of Chiquetti at, at some stage in your lives in your in whatever channel it may be in whatever direction um or maybe we could have a reunion in um, Holland in Michigan for the 2024 Chiquetti International Classical Ballet Competition, which would be lots of fun. You can, I, I'm happy to share a room with any one of you. <laughs> All together, we can gain a huge room. It would be a lot of fun, but you've been absolutely delightful. You're all amazing women. You've all um, 
had amazing careers and uh, one of the, the best things to me is that you are um, such beautiful people and it's been a privilege. Thank you very much for sharing your time with us today and we wish you every best of all the best from all of us in your futures. Thank you.